Kidding. We've got the 2020 <laughs> Nissan Titan. Titan that has a little bit of the Warrior concept. Of course, the Warrior concept was a truck that Nissan unveiled in Detroit maybe like five years ago. And they never should have done it because they proved that they could design a really badass looking truck that yeah. looked like everything needed to challenge the Ford Raptor. But what they did do is they updated their Nissan Titan because the second generation Titan didn't sell very well and it needed some help. Yeah, and what do you think of my new Christmas get up? Look at that. I've got John Deere? Yeah. Oh dear. No. Um, Are you more of an international I think, harvester? Well, no. Stephen needs that shirt. <laughs> Stephen needs that shirt. So there we go. Um, can you explain to everybody what we have here? Because that's not Nissan. No, look, it's a Supra. I want to thank our friends over at Toyota who sent us this New Year's present. Check this out. Happy New Year from the entire team. Thank you guys. And they sent us a little Supra. That is super. That is super. And check this out. Look at this. Look what, look what came in this map box dude it's not a onesie is it and it's not a onesie no yeah it's a onesie <laughs> supra it's look at this it's a it's a official supra book i mean if i had a supra i would love something like that ah are you hinting to the audience that we're going to be getting a supra as a no, long we're, not, we're not getting a we're not getting a supra, <laughs> getting a supra. <laughs> because it's pure exhilaration nathan it's pure exhilaration um I, I, you know, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's there cool, are a lot cool. of people out there who would really dig something like that. Yeah, so we want to thank our friends over at Toyota for sending us this. And uh, let's get it off the Nissan truck because yes, let's talk about the truck. Indeed. And I think we should start with the engine. So I'm going to pop the hood. Yep. All right, guys. So some of you may have heard that Nissan has upped the horsepower and torque of the 5.6 liter V8. And to a certain degree, they have. This puts out 400 horsepower and 413 pound-feet of torque. But that's only with premium fuel. And that little caveat, they didn't throw out there right away. And I, I do fault Nissan for that because frankly, that's what we all thought initially. The thing is, is that if you put regular fuel in here, it basically runs exactly like the old one, which was about 390 horsepower and 300, was it 96 pound-feet of torque? 394 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque. There you go. And we will start up at the end so you can hear it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because this is actually a really good sounding V8. In fact, in my mind, in terms of trucks, the only other one that sounds, I think, a little bit better would be the Toyota Tundra with the TRD exhaust package. But here's the big news. Underneath here, right back there, isn't a seven-speed automatic transmission. It is now a nine-speed automatic transmission. Much smoother much more compliant on the highway. Now we don't know what this thing will do in terms of EPA numbers because they have not been released yet. However, Nissan has indicated that it'll be a more efficient setup. Well, I mean, the headline, of course, Nathan, is it's the most powerful full-size truck you can buy now if you put the right fuel into it. If you put the right fuel into it, but see, that's not exactly true in terms of capacity because half of that, half, more than half of the half-ton trucks out there now have a diesel engine available, which will tow more than this with no problem. So you got to drive it. You just did a video, right? Yeah. Or this just in video. What's it like? Is it drive differently than the old one? It we does were, a little bit. We had the Pro 4X, the yellow one. Yeah, and I really like that truck, yeah. by the way. I, it was a flexible truck. It was great off-road. This is not the Pro 4X, by the way. This is the SL model. So this is a little bit more of the luxurious one. It doesn't have the off-road suspension. It doesn't have the locking rear diff. What it does have is four-wheel drive, and it has a very nice-looking interior, which we will get to in a minute. It's smooth. It's quiet. Would I say it's as good as the competition? Steering, yes, even better in some cases. Uh, acceleration's pretty good. It's, shifting is really smooth right now. Really, really smooth. I am very curious to see how this thing tows, and I'm very curious to see how its MPG is, because those are the things that it needed to improve, and hopefully the new transmission's helped. All right, let's uh, answer some questions before we go and show yeah. on the inside. So somebody, someone is asking about the uh, Samurai, Nathan. One of the guys wants to know what's going on with the Samurai. You know, I just answered that question in my little weekly column, Ask Nathan, which is on tflcar.com. Um, it is currently being worked on. I just did a little bit of work to the carburetor. It was sputtering a little bit. Uh, it needs new front brakes. I'm doing that. Unfortunately, we have snow here, and it's really hard to work on a vehicle in the snow. It's probably going to have to wait until mid-spring before I bring it back as a slightly different Suzuki Samurai. I'm keeping the engine, I'm keeping the transmission, I'm keeping most of the components the same, but I'm updating it to make it a little bit more off-road worthy. Yep. So, there you go. There you go. Uh, people want to know uh, what's going on with the uh, new 7.3. I'm going to answer that one. So we just did another video, um, which is, I think, pretty exciting because there's another announcement 
that I think is big for us. So oh, yeah. that'll be up on Truck tomorrow. So uh, be sure to check that out on TFL Truck. I will tell you that we did do a tug of war with it today. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we just finished with a tug of war. So just wait, and I think you'll enjoy that video. We're having fun with it. Uh, but we're here because of the Titan. So let's get back to the Titan, Nathan. So Nathan, I mean, you've got basically not the Pro 4X package here, but more of the um, more luxurious more of the luxurious yeah, chrome the city slicker truck right yeah um i do like the you know like, like the big hooks that's always been a nice touch how much is this one zach do we have a monroney do we price so, it out what i did was i priced out the 2019 model yep, yep because they don't have the 2020 model available yet that's why there's no numbers out there now a 19 is about fifty four thousand dollars yep as equipped and I think that this will be close to that, you know, a couple hundred bucks bumped because it's an all new vehicle. So at least we can just kind of sort of come within the ballpark. Um, that's still not a bad price considering what you get. This thing is loaded. Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing a front facing camera right there. Oh, it's got the 360 view camera which system. Which is cool, yeah. Yep, which Nissan, by the way, pioneered. They were one of the first to really mass the, the produce bird, it. The bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. Over here we have the uh, parking sensors. So it's got parking sensors. Let's show them the inside. What do you say? Yep, yep, yeah. yep, absolutely. So, yeah. camera guy, come on over here and let's look at the inside. Now, by the way, these are not power folding mirrors. Why? Nissan's yeah, why? cheap. <laughs> why? Um, now, they do pull out for towing, which is pretty good. The size is okay, but I'm a little distraught about the fact that it doesn't have power folding mirrors because really everybody else who competes does. You so. know what it has a lot of? Huh? Chrome, man. This is one chromey truck. Yeah, look, look, chrome on the, the front, steps. chrome on the wheels, chrome over here. Look at massive chrome on the door handles. This is a very chromey Titan. This is perfect for a guy who has a 10 year old son like me who gets fingerprints on everything. He will print this entire truck up and you won't even need powder to dust hey, to find out who did it. This has got to be the biggest V8. It's a pretty damn big V8 thing right there. So you actually want to turn the light on in there so we yeah. can show yeah, them Yeah, let's, let's fire it up. That is, that is Titanic. If I can, <laughs> there you uh, go. I think you went the big, there. I think the yeah, I went there. I think the biggest improvement has got to be on the interior. By all means, absolutely. Yeah. There, but there is one flaw, okay, that I found in this interior when I started driving it. Now, first of all, let's talk about the positives. The positives, right here. All of this has been changed. It's been updated. So you have a much tighter looking. There are very few seams. Nice contrasting colors. This whole area here is all new, new screen, new infotainment system. All of this is new. Button placement has been changed. I do like the placement for the trailer brakes, by the way. This is a really good spot here. There are a couple things here. You know, you can remove this and move it around a little bit and da da da. Okay, that's the good stuff. By the way, I like this, this stitching here, which everybody's doing now. I still like it. But if you look where Roman is right now, yep, over here. Roman's hand, yep. knock on that, knock on that. Yep. How many competitors have a fully laden luxury truck with a solid hard plastic right there? Yeah, I mean, that's the problem, right? If this mm -hmm. were a base truck, I could see it. Yeah, but, but, but it's, it's not. not. It's, it's the top of the line. Right, everything else is fine right there. I mean, this is, okay, so here it's nice and soft where your right. elbow goes. And even on the door panel. Yeah, and the seats are nice, but yeah, you're right, it'd be nice. It's, it's just Because it's I it's, rest my arm when I drive, and that's, that's just something I've noticed on some vehicles. It's a little annoying. Here's the good news. The seats are extremely comfortable. This whole area here, very accommodating. Here, open it up. Ta-da! You know, typical. All in all, they've managed to improve almost everything in the interior. So, almost. So here's a question for you. Yeah. Bob Dylan wants to know how many strippers and bikinis fit in the bed. Bob Dylan? Yeah, Bob Dylan wants Bob to Bob Dylan's know. asking about strippers? That's crazy. Um, <laughs> I he doesn't see in the bed. Like the stripper kind, does he? Actually, I have an answer for you, and I'll meet you in the back if you want to talk about the bed. But we do want to talk about the back seat first. Right, let's talk about the back seat. Okay, so let's, so let's, let's, let's see what the back seat is. The other thing while you're showing in the back seat I can talk about is, of yeah. course, safety, right? Nissan has now uh, doubled down on safety, which is great. So every Titan comes along with, you know, the basic safety Nine equipment. So you have things like blindside monitoring. You have backup monitoring. You have autonomous braking. You have, you know, a lot of great stuff that... Um, they do I, it standard now, right? Yeah, 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 standard, al yeah. Almost every car in Nissan, in fact, I think every car in Nissan's fleet has yeah. that safety shield. Okay, have a looky here. First of all, these seats are very comfortable. I fit behind myself with no problem whatsoever. But I do like this. This is very easy to configure. 
boom, boom. And there's, uh, this is a locking section, which I do not have the key to, but basically, if I did have the key, I could put stuff in here. Can you see that, Ian? Lock it, boom. It's yeah. just under there, nice and safe. It's, it's your gun cubby. <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> whatever you choose to put in there. Um, I do like the fact that they have ports, air conditioning, all that stuff back here. Once again, for the class, it's not a big deal because everybody else is doing it, but I'm really glad that Nissan's doing it as well. That gives you guys more stuff for the money. It is a very versatile vehicle. Yeah, it is. And I, that's what I liked about the last one. But let's go in the back. We were talking about and, and what, the, strippers and, and stuff. And the other cool thing about this truck, of course, it's built in Mississippi. It is. Yeah. Um, good, old, good old Mississippi truck that we got here. Now, where you are, Roman, yep. you do have a plug-in just below your where you let's are. Let's open the, Zach, can you open the, uh, can you can there, show I got it. There yeah, we thank go. you. So there's hey, a plug. While you're doing that, Ethan Wood has oh, a yeah. comment saying he watches the show whenever he can. Hey, Ethan. Uh, hey, Ethan. His four-year-old son watches as well, oh. and at least twice a day goes around and says, Power Wagon Don't Care. Power Wagon Don't Care, you have an awesome son. Not even my kid does that. He won't, he won't do it for me. You know what I like? I like, I like these little LEDs up here. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, the, yeah. and there's splash LEDs right here, too. Yeah, right there. You can uh -huh. see them, yeah. And it fills up the bed. It's pretty nice. Over there is your plug-in yep, for so, a trailer. Yep, yep. Here's the power. Up there, there it goes. There it goes, yep. Yep. For and the fish. We do have the, the cleat system. We've seen this before. This is new. This has been around. Nissan was one of the yeah. first truck companies to do this with the Frontier, by the way. They did this a long time ago before other people did. Not before everybody, but... It was pretty early. Okay, so you guys were asking about how many human beings or whatever it can hold. Well, I can tell you at least some cargo room. So this vehicle is able to tow up to 9,370 pounds when properly equipped. Once again, properly equipped, it can have 1,680 pounds of payload. Uh, I think Bob Dylan was asking about strippers. Yes, that would be quite a few in the back that you could hold. So that answers his question Mr. as Wait well. Thin. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it depends on the type that you like, I suppose. Yes. yes. Um, but we'll, we'll try to veer away. Four-year-olds are watching, so we're going to yeah, veer that's away. Good, that's, yeah, that's a good amount of capacity. I think you're right. It is. And yeah. well, it's competitive. Everything it's competitive. about this truck is competitive. It's, it's not. It's right in the sweet spot. Exactly. Yeah. This is not what I would call a vehicle that you buy specifically for towing. This is one that can tow quite a bit, though. So you have all that. Once again, I prefer the Pro 4X because it has all the off-road stuff. I actually think that the Pro 4X may give you a better ride as well with that suspension, but that I'll have like, to verify. I do like this kind of diamond plate-like. It's plastic, unfortunately, but it, right. it is a nice design. Uh, I like the fact that we have our um, towing electrical right where you can get at it, right where it doesn't... Yeah, it's in a good spot. They, they've definitely... It's better than having it right to... Yeah, yeah. And, and the safety chain uh, hookups are also in a good spot. And they're good size. And they're good size, so they're easy to get to. If you're going to put a D-ring on there, it'll, it'll, it'll work fine. But overall, I like these taillights. These, of course, are new as well. Mm -hmm. You know, LED, I think now... A little bit more of the warrior look. Once again, they yeah. were definitely going for that. So, you know, they've made a lot of improvements to the exterior of the truck and the interior of the truck transmission those are the main things we don't know about overall performance quite yet but we are going to get there uh we're going to be doing quite a few tests with this truck and also actually we would like your input see what you guys want us to do with this as well within reason roman will not let me take it up cliffhanger 2.0 Especially not the uh, non-Pro 4X. No, the non-Pro 4X one, which we've done with the Pro 4X, by the way. We've taken that one up there, and it did really well. Hey, Nathan, come on, come on up here, and let's answer their questions. We've got a okay. whole bunch of questions coming in, so here are, here are some seats that we can sit down on. I got, I got it, I got it. And let's answer the questions. Okie dokie. Yeah, fire away. So, you know, Nissan is kind of, as you know right now, in... A very difficult spot, right? Oh, they are having... This they, their CEO just quit. He, he was the guy who was going to turn it around. He managed to stay about a month before he also left. That did not last long, yeah. Yeah, so uh, they're really in a tough position. So it's good that they're staying with the full-size truck because I think there was a realistic chance that Nissan would walk away from the full-size truck market. So I'm really happy because, you know, I think competition makes the breed better. Yep. Uh, and there's a, a lot to love about this truck. There is, and the thing is, for those of you who really cannot afford a $75,000 truck to do the basic things you needed to do, you can get a truck for a lot less with almost all the same equipment 
from Nissan. And that's something to keep in mind. I mean, the, these are well-priced, and I think they're really well-made trucks. Yeah, and, and you know, there's a lot to be said also for how trucks are sold, right? I mm -hmm. mean, you know, we're talking MSRP of potentially 55000 We don't know, but you know how that works in the real world, right? I mean, it's pretty easy to get at least a couple grand, if not $5,000 off I've any heard truck. stories about Nissan Titans being sold for way under MSRP, like 20% in some cases. So we, we don't like to talk about that because obviously that, that's an individual thing. It depends on your ability to, to bargain. And it depends on the time of the month, of course. the time of the year. You know, there's just a lot of factors. But for value, you're getting a lot of truck... I looked at a few used ones recently. I, I, I'm still trying to convince my wife that we can get a full-size truck, and she keeps saying no. And I've actually looked. I love the first-generation Nissan Titan. Something about the way it looks and sounds is just kind of awesome. But she wants something that's mid-size. So. Somebody's saying this truck can be had with discounts for about 45k. I wouldn't disagree with that. I wouldn't disagree with that either. Yeah. It, it, you know, the proof is in the pudding. It depends on who you are, the time of the year, all that stuff, and where you are too. By yeah. the way, um, Mitchell Martin was asking about the rear axle ratio on the 2020 Titan. It's gone up. It's now 369. Yeah. With that new nine-speed automatic transmission, the old truck was a 293. And I don't think there's any options for that either. I don't think you can get a different rear end either. Nope. It's the same regardless of which Titan you get. Right. And, you know, let's talk about that because that's one of the things that the Japanese don't do well, right? I think there are now six engine options with the Ford F-150. Oh, same even thing more. With, the, with, the, with the Silverado. Auto, right? right, tons. Yeah, here, I mean, you better Z love it. <laughs> it's a good engine, but that's all you got. In fact, they got rid of the V8 diesel, which was available technically this past year. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, they do have the XD still, but the big difference between this truck and the XD really is the frame. Same axles. And I think that was confusing interior. too, because yeah. for a long time I think people thought that the XD was the five liter Cummins. It mm -hmm. wasn't. No. It was just a bigger, heavier truck. Right. So they have simplified it and they have made it, you know, a little bit easier. I think that's probably a good thing. I think so too. Uh, you know, Nissan made a bit, big mistake when they introduced the XD first, and then they brought in the Hun. Could have done it the other way around, because in my book, the half ton's the way better truck. And we wouldn't, you know, be. Us without talking about the Frontier, because I'm oh, sure people yeah. are wondering about the Frontier. It's it, it's one of my favorite trucks. I'm sure it's, it's a be. great little truck. It's well, yet again another truck I've been looking at. The thing about it is that right now nothing official has been stated, other than Nissan says yes, there will be a new one, and it is coming out fairly soon. We could guess. We could guess that we might see something at the Chicago yes. show or something like so that. So we got invited to um, one, uh, to the XD program, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and. Um, um, Stephen's going on that. And then the, in the invite, they said there will be an announcement about the Frontier. So I'm hoping that they actually unveil something. Because when is that? Do you know? It's like in two weeks. In two it's, weeks? Yeah, it's coming up next month. So okay. two, three weeks. So we'll, we'll know more news soon. My boy, Stephen, will take care of you guys. Yeah, Trust so stay tuned that. for that. If, if there is a new Frontier, we'll be the first. Because you know there's a Navarro, right? right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the Navarro is basically the Mexican version of the next generation. Well, it's actually the overseas Frontier. version, too. Yeah. The thing is, is that they, Nissan says it's not going to be in the Navarro. So it'll, I think it'll have a lot of similar components and so it'll share components, but it's supposed to be different. So we'll find out. Yeah, and the mid-size truck market is red hot right now oh yeah you can't you know can't shake a stick without seeing a mid-sized truck get off a lot be that a you know ranger a colorado or possibly the Rand dakota we're hearing or, rumors once again about them maybe doing that yeah or tacoma all right any other questions for us here's a question that's floating around the live chat yeah titan or tundra Ooh, Ooh. Good question. okay i actually have an answer okay if you're thinking about off-roading and you actually want to go actual off-roading, the Pro 4X is a slightly better choice than the TRD the Pro. The rear diff. That's why, the yeah. locking rear diff. And I love the Toyota Tundra. Actually, we just did a video, Andre and I, talking about it and you know the fact that it still has some relevance. But the bottom line is that it's got a lot of old stuff in it. At least the Titan is refreshed and newer, and it's got newer components and a much better infotainment system, too. And I like good stereos, and this has a really good stereo. Hey, we got to ring the bell, Nathan. We got a donation of $10 oh, from ding, ding, ding. Yeah, Red7188. Uh, he's asking, was a Ford dealership that they had to use 2017? was at a Ford dealership that they had a used 2017 Mercedes E560. I was surprised that my wife and I thought the F-150 Limited had better seats. We'd love to see how they compare to the S-Class to the Ram. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. Well, okay. I think truck seats are actually much better. Oh, my God. Quick. They've gotten so much better. 
You know, there was a time when you would sit in a truck and it was a penalty box. Do you guys remember the vinyl seats, the bench oh, seats? Oh, yeah, just... we had it in a Big Green. That's remember? right. Yeah, and that was not a very comfortable it place was, to be. It was basically a church pew with yeah. vinyl on it. Yeah, you, you really are asking for forgiveness when you're sitting in it. But now, over the past, say, 15 years, they've gone to making these things as comfortable as sofa seats so you can drive cross-country, no problem. We had, was it a 15 uh, Raptor? Yeah, 14. It was a 14 Raptor. Incredible comfortable. The most comfortable truck I've ever sat in up until that point. I was stunned. And we drove it from here to freaking Baltimore and back. And, you know, there's more to, like, just seat comfort. I mean, if you took one seat and put out out of the truck and put it next to, like, a Mercedes seat, they both might be very comfortable. But mm. there's more to it than that, right? Well, the yeah. truck will always have more room. Yes, so, tons so of you room. Feel like and we're big guys, yeah. so we'll, having that extra space is nice. And then you'll always sit higher, so mm -hmm. you'll always, like, have much higher seating position, right? Yep. It'll, it, you'll never feel like your head is cramped in a truck, right? Because even with the sunroof, which usually takes up a good two inches. Unless you're in a Toyota Tacoma. Unless you're, unless you're in a Toyota. <laughs> That's a good point. I love the truck, but man, man, you always feel cramped in one of those. And, and, and then, you know, very rarely do I ever run out of, like, back room, when I, even in a midsize truck. The only one that I actually don't really fit into completely comfortably uh, is the Gladiator, but that's because it's basically built on a Wrangler. And yeah. It doesn't, it, 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 and even the Gladiator is longer than the Wrangler in terms of its back seat room. So trucks just have incredible amounts of room. The other thing is, is that if they have an off-road suspension, they tend to be really gushy on the road, and that's really nice for those of you who want a comfortable ride. So we have another $5 from Fred Jeep. Oh, uh, hey, thanks, hey, Fred. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, is six passenger seating available in the SL and higher? The only way I can get a truck is if it holds more people than a passport. Actually, oh. Ian, let's show them the interior one yeah. more time. Go have a look at the interior. Um, as far as I know, um, the SL comes this way with the 2019 model. I don't know if the newer one is going to have a front bench seat. There are certain trucks that do. Yeah. Uh, usually they're the, the lower end trucks, though. Yeah, I don't think that they're going to have one, Nathan. I think this is what you get. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure it is what you get. But look, look, even with the sunroof, I have adequate headroom. Uh, you know, this is set for you. So, um, you know, I can, I can go back as far as I want. Um, it's just a very comfortable truck. And I do love this big screen, right? It feels much more modern. I'm not sure I love this wood. I think it's an applique. Yeah, it is an applique. It, 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 they wanted to break up the image, and I don't think they wanted to use, like, a fake plastic metal. I think it's okay. The SL is supposed to be a little bit more upscale, but I do like the contrasting color, how this matches the seats. Yeah, this is beautiful. Actually. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. And I like the stitching. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a Ram thing, but it looks good. And there's, you know, something about column shifters. Oh, we got to mention that, actually. Yeah, they just go well together with trucks, right? I'm really, yes, they do. I'm not in love with, like, a Ram that has a little um, knob here. It's not great. Yeah, the rotary. Yeah, and I actually like, I like the old center shifters as well yeah which some of the, the older nissans actually had um the thing is is that roman just showing you the column shift the thing is is that when this thing you're actually driving it and you put it into gear it's very light to the touch and some people really don't like that feeling they want to feel clink 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 and it's more like <clears throat> and it just drops really quick it might have to do with the new transmission setup i'm not 100 percent sure but it ve it's very soft and you it know, takes a while to... actually i can open the garage real quick you can start it up and actually damage yeah that. let's do that what do you say roman yeah start up but you know one of the things that hasn't changed unfortunately is this look how look how wobbly that is Nathan. yeah it is yeah. wobbly and yeah. it's also very plasticky yeah all right well let's he'll start up and see what this sounds like we did a video with the exhaust note but the nissan came to me and said that wasn't the final version so this obviously this is the final version all right here we go starting it up here, I'll, I'll... Let me smell it! You ready? Yeah! All right. Nice! <laughs> That's just great! <laughs> At least it's not a diesel. <laughs> but I still say that's one of the best sounding exhausts out there next to the Toyota TRD with their exhaust setup. So, All right, Nathan, I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, yeah? All right. Full-size truck, rank the exhaust note from from uh, best, actually from worst, I shouldn't say worst, from your least favorite to your most favorite. My Still my favorite is the Toyota Tundra with the TRD exhaust I'm, setup. I'm with you on that one. That, okay. That's got the very best. This is second. Okay, number two. Uh, I then think I, number three is the, to, uh, is the uh, Ford F-150 with the Coyote V8. That sounds fantastic. Yep. The funny thing is, as much as I love the Chevy Silverado, Silverado. with the 6.2 liter V8, yep. it doesn't sound as awesome as it should. 
and it's just like, really? So um, I'm gonna rank the Hemi just above that one. The Hemi sounds really good, but it sounds much better when you put an aftermarket exhaust on it. So Youngblood says the worst exhaust note, in my opinion. Oh, it's, uh, for uh, the Raptor. He says the Raptor has the worst exhaust note. Yeah, and they augment it too, which really bugs me. I really wish they wouldn't do that, especially with a truck. You guys out there want the natural sound, even if it doesn't sound great. But Ford puts a resonating device on there for the Raptor. Yeah, they pump in the sound, actually. They, 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 no, they fake it. They it's fake actually, it. It's fake. It's not real. It's, I, I, yeah. it's just, it, it hurts. It, it hurts me here. What do they you guys think? They do the think? same thing in the uh, Mustang, though, with the turbocharger. Yeah, the, the turbocharged yeah, Mustang. Yeah, they also did it in the uh, Ford Focus ST. Yeah, so, yeah. so anyway. Um, one of the things that I want to do, and I want to ask your opinion on this, is, you know, we've got that new 7.3 liter Super Duty. Right. And I wanted to go... Put an exhaust on it oh, right hell away. Yeah. A cat bag. You think that'd be a good idea? Well, of course I do. <laughs> it's but it's gonna it's gonna cause an issue, and I'm not. The issue is it's gonna invalidate some of our testing, mm. right? Because potentially it might give you a little bit more horsepower. What do you guys think? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Should we first do our testing or first do the exhaust? And I'm leaning toward the exhaust. I'm I'm leaning towards the testing because Andre's gonna lose his lunch <laughs> the minute you say, "Hey, we're gonna change the exhaust before we do the testing." He's his eyes will bulge out and he'll freak. <laughs> He'll lose his head. I think well, it how might... much will the testing invalidate the results? I mean, it's well, just a back exhaust, right? It, it is just an exhaust, and a lot of people are going to do that, but the other side of it is people want the actual hard numbers, and because this is a heavy-duty truck, that uh, those numbers are not required to be printed, so we'll find out what those numbers are. Perhaps we can take care of that all in a couple weeks and then put on the exhaust. Oh, I've got people, half of them saying test first, and um, Mitchell Martin saying exhaust, Austin Campbell saying exhaust, um, Christopher Tucson saying for testing, testing first, exhaust first. It's split right down the middle here. Okay, so <laughs> if you have comments that you want to email, send them to Zach Kara of info at tflcar.com and we can come up with voting through that, right, I'm Zach? Honestly, with the half that's saying do the exhaust because the precedent's been set with the TFL Ram Rebel, which yeah. sounds awesome. It did sound awesome. And somebody, somebody wanted to know how much uh, towing capacity it has, just under 15,000 pounds. What, the, uh, oh, the, the Ford? Yeah, Ford. Yeah. Hey, Bobby Murphy says uh, $25, and Happy New Ooh. Year, brothers. Can't wait to see Thank what you, Bobby. comes in the new year. Thank you, Bobby. Very much appreciated. We got a big new year coming. We've got a lot of, we got great project trucks and project things happening. We've got a lot of adventures that we're scheduling. It's going to be a crazy and awesome year. Uh, Andre's getting a new haircut for you guys. It's going to be great. And Bobby, for $25, you also get a TFL hat. So send Zach an email at info, no, ask, sorry, ask at TFL truck with your address and we'll send you a hat. So thank Hell you yeah. very much. And we still have those uh, sweatshirts, right, Zach? Those are 99. Yes, we do. We have a pretty big box so, of them. Yeah, those are $99 so. now. We've just reduced the price. So if you want a TFL sweatshirt for the holidays, $99. And most of, cozy. most of that money is going to go into helping us produce better videos. And put an exhaust on our Ford. Maybe put an exhaust <laughs> on our Ford. I still haven't, I still haven't determined uh, what, what to do. Because if you get it wrong, it's going to be really droney and not good. Oh, we'll get it right. Yeah. Not to worry. Sure. We, we know the right people to talk to. Yeah? Yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll be fine. All right. Any other questions before we close out this edition of What Car or Truck Should I Buy? Um, yeah, I have a couple of prepared questions. Okay, the let's first hear. one from the comments. Yep. Uh, ZR2 for the money, gas or diesel? Well, it depends. Gas. I mean, if you, but if, what if he works and he does something where he tows all the time and he goes long distance, then diesel makes sense. You know, um, a friend of mine actually has his own little gardening business and he constantly is towing six or seven thousand pounds and he's moving all over Denver and Boulder, Colorado. So he puts on something like 60,000 miles a year minimum. Diesel makes sense. But if you're just a day-to-day -day driver, I think gas might make more sense. That Chevy 3.6 is proven. You know, it's a through and through well-sorted engine. It's, in a, it's like the Pentastar, right? It's right. a lot of Chevy products. Uh, and over the long term, you will save money in diesel fuel costs, but repairing diesels and the upkeep on them gets very expensive very quickly. Now, speaking of diesels, by the way, we actually have a diesel Wrangler that we're testing right now. So stay tuned for some videos on that one. All right, Zach, another question, please. Dan Lovell asked via email, I'm in the market for a new Ram and was wondering your opinion on the third gen eco diesel. Do you think it's improved and worth buying or do you think the Hemi is still a better buy? Well, Roman sort of just answered that. Uh, the thing is, is about, once again, if you're gonna go a long distance and you want a little bit more range, the diesel's obviously the way to go, but the Hemi otherwise, right? 
Yeah, I'd go for the Hemi. You know, I love a V8, and I think they're just a lot more, um, a lot more better for full-size trucks. I, if, if I were getting anything else but that 7.3 in a Super Duty or a Heavy Duty, I'd probably get a diesel. Right. But full-size trucks, I'd still get a V8. And, you know, obviously the question is, are they going to be problematic because the last ones were we don't know it's too early we it's don't know it, way it, early you know that that epa thing didn't happen until maybe two years after uh those were on the market and by that point you know it was too late so we one of the reasons we're buying uh trucks and keeping them for a year is to do more reliability testing right you guys keep asking us what uh truck should you buy based on its reliability and i think that's why i'm gonna hate to say this but i think that's why you know the biggest um blowhard on YouTube is so popular. I'm not going to say his name, but, you know, this person says that they do, that they know about reliability. I don't necessarily agree with that because just saying it and actually testing it are two different things. And right. we want to put numbers and data and facts behind our opinion. And, and not, real world testing, too. Yeah, and not just like blah, 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 blah. That's what I think, right? Uh, so the bottom line here, I think we can get to is the fact that there are some trucks out there that have proven engines that have been used for years and years and years, and you can really find out what those numbers are. Newer engines, bottom line, we don't know for sure. A lot of people don't know for sure because long-term testing, EPA numbers, all those things in some cases aren't even out yet. So hey, something to keep in thanks mind. Thanks to Big Ben, Dollar 99 donation. Oh, thanks, Big Ben. Thank Appreciate you, it. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're, we're just going to, you know, try to put some hard numbers behind uh, our latest truck acquisition so that you guys know you know what ex our experiences and even even let's say even if we do spend a year and we have a bad or a good experience with it you know uh -huh. it could go either way right that doesn't prove a lot because it's just one out of tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands that that's right you have to take everything with a grain of salt guys and, and keep in mind that no matter where you test a vehicle be it at sea level there could be issues if he's tested up here there could be issues there's so many variables but we will give you our honest opinion and we will give you the honest numbers there's no reason for us to fudge anything yeah i mean one of the things we always do is uh, we're transparent uh and so you know exactly what we know all right guys well thank you for joining us for this episode of what car or truck should i buy and hopefully on friday come back when uh, we get the uh, old gang back together again actually it'll probably be um, you and kent because andre's on vacation Okay. So they're going to get Andre and Kent, or me, Andre and Kent, or Kent and me, or somebody. We'll figure it out. We'll make it work. We'll make we'll make it work. We're just happy that you guys are here. Zach, any final questions before we say goodbye? Um, Big Ben, nineteen seventy one, did a ten dollar donation. Thank, Thank you, Big Ben. Ben. Thank you. Um, Ariane Galloway, five dollars. Thanks, guys. Purchased my seventeen ninety four Toyota Tundra because of you, gents. Oh wow. Well, okay. Far out. It'll last a long time. See, I that also, truck we know about. I also purchased my Audi A7 because of you guys. Awesome channel. Ah, far out. Congratulations. And to everybody out there, I wanted to say in advance, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, all that stuff. Please be safe out there. People are psychopaths on the road, as you know. And uh, Roman, anything else to add? Um, well, apparently we're sellouts, Nathan. Oh. <laughs> because Scotty is right every day. That's what this, this comment is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He's right every day. Right. That sounds good to me. You know what? Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Remember, come back to TFL Truck for more news, views, and, of course, real-world honest reviews. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.